Foreshortening is one of the most important elements of perspective and one which can often give us a lot of trouble when we're actually drawing. It's the principle that says, as an object moves away from us, the further away it becomes, the more visually compressed what we see is. Or if you like, the narrower what we see is. And because buildings are large objects that can extend over a long distance, what it means is, as we're looking at the one side of a building, what we see actually gets narrower and narrower as our eye moves across that building, as it becomes further away from us. And the same works in this direction. And this is a good example to show us that when we're looking at a building and one wall angles away from us at a more shallow angle than the other wall, what that means is that the distance between us as the observer and say this spot is less than the distance between us as an observer and this point. Therefore, there's more narrowing as we move along the columns on this side because of the more extreme angle than happens on this side. We have one, two, three, four, five columns that take up this much space, which is less than the space of two columns on this side. Now, columns are a great example to show this pattern, but it applies to anything that's on the wall or in front of the wall. And it's particularly noticeable when we have windows that are equally spaced. Here we have a hotel in the south of France. Now these windows are all the same size and they're all equally spaced from each other. But if we count the windows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that tells us that the halfway point is between the fourth and fifth windows. So this line that I've drawn in here is actually the halfway point along this wall. And yet if we are to measure the wall, the width is 90 millimeters, but the halfway point of the wall actually comes at 30 millimeters, not 45 millimeters. And this is because of that principle that as we look further along this wall that's moving further away from us, what we see is compressed. And when we're drawing, if we don't get this right, if we don't narrow our windows as they move further away from us, and if we don't narrow the gaps between them as they move further away from us, then we get this effect where not just is our building stretched out, but the proportions of the various architectural elements have to change as well. So our rectangular window becomes a square window by the end, and the overall proportions of our building are distorted. So how can I work out where the divisions need to go? Let's say I'm drawing columns. How can I work out where to place the columns? Because even when there's a relatively shallow angle moving away. This column is not much further away from us than this column here. And yet the gap from center to center of the columns here is a lot different to here. So how do we work this out so that our drawing is accurate? Let me show you a quick and easy technique. Let's say we have a rectangular wall and we want to place five columns along it. We could just work it out by eye. And that could easily be fairly accurate for many of us. But what if our wall were angled away from us like this? How would we know, for instance, where to put the center one? So a great technique to know how to position our architectural elements exactly is to draw the diagonals of the space that we want to divide. Then this space is the halfway point. So this would be where our center column would be. So with my wall turned away, there's my center column. And if there were a column at each end, but let's assume I want to place a column in the center of each of these halves. Now it's easy enough here to just see where that would be, but not so easy here because it's not going to be in the center of each one because everything's being compressed, everything's becoming narrower the further along it moves. So again, if I come back to my straightforward side, I can do the same thing here. And that again shows me where to put it. I can do the same here. So I can see how it works in this example. But for this one, I can do the same thing. And I get this point. And I can see looking at this, that this space is much wider than this space. And this shows how much visual compression has happened between looking at this space and this space. 
And if we do the same thing down here, we can see the same thing, that this half is actually wider than this half. And the rule of thumb we can see quite easily now is that as we move along, the spaces get narrower and narrower. So when I'm drawing something freehand and possibly directly in ink, so I can't have construction lines in pencil to guide where I'm going to put the lines, the principle I need to follow is that the spaces become narrower and narrower and narrower. But it does depend on how much the wall is turned away from us. So for instance, if my wall is turned away from us at a shallower angle than this one. Then while we can see that the spaces between our columns do become narrower and narrower, the difference between each one is not as great as in this example that we started with. And if I turn my wall away at a steeper angle, I can see that in fact the difference becomes narrower and narrower faster and faster. Now let's say I'm wanting to place windows in each of these spaces. And the windows are all equally spaced and the same size. When it comes to a wall that's moving away from me, what I need to do is now fit each window between here. What I need to do is to fit each window in the spaces that we've established. But I need to notice that while in this example, this space is the same right the way along, in these examples, this space is going to get narrower and narrower from one side of the window to the other. Here. And for our most extreme example, I actually don't have enough room even to draw the windows properly once we get right to the end. And this is why when we're drawing long rows of buildings that are foreshortened, when we get right down the street, we can just begin to start doing straight lines as our windows, straight lines that move closer and closer together because the visual compression is so great, there's actually not the room for our pen width to draw the detail that quite possibly is still in our photo. And if I'm drawing freehand directly in pen, so I don't want to have these construction lines on my page, what I can do, if I'm not sure of how the foreshortening is going to work, under my real drawing, I can get a scrap sheet of paper and draw something like this, the same proportions and widths work it out and get a sense of how quickly the compression happens and how far along the halfway point is. I find it always very helpful to at the very least work out where I think the halfway point is. Let me just add on a long wall it's not just that things are visually compressed but what we actually see inside the inside inside each window space changes the further along the wall the windows go. Because, the, because with a long wall, particularly one that's not, because with a long wall, the view that we get inside this window space actually changes. We're looking more front onto the window here and more side onto the window further down we go. And therefore what we see changes, it doesn't just become narrower. I have another foreshortening video that explains and demonstrates how all that works. But I hope this very simple and quick way of establishing how foreshortening occurs and where it occurs for a given wall at a given slope, for a given sized wall and a given slope away from us, proves helpful next time you're doing a drawing and faced with the challenge of how to fit the windows or the columns or whatever we're talking about into these spaces. This can also be helpful if we want to place something such as a pediment 
on top of our building. It can be tempting to actually think halfway and to put it here instead of working out where the foreshortened halfway point is and put it there. Once you start thinking of visualizing this framework, I'm sure you'll find more and more ways to apply it. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Hope this little tip's been helpful for you. I'll see you next time. Bye.